Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. March 21st, Thomas Spurgeon. Thomas, whose name means twin, was indeed a twin, born to Charles Haddon and Susanna Spurgeon in 1856. His name also means leader. But young Thomas was plagued with ill health that derailed his dreams of attending pastor's college in England. Instead, his parents sent him to Australia. Eventually, after building his health and preaching in Australia, Thomas returned to England and filled the pulpit of his father's church, the largest Baptist church in the British Empire. As pastor of that church, he also led many of its outreach ministries, In addition to these duties, he wrote books and articles. On this date, in 1894, he was elected as pastor of his father's church, the Metropolitan Tabernacle. This is today's story. God's work in us is meant to build unshakable confidence. The bleeding of thousands of sheep filled the air. Shearers were paid according to the number of sheep sheared. But when Thomas Spurgeon, son of Charles Spurgeon, England's prince of preachers, stepped into the wool shed, the shearers left their work to hear Thomas preach. Raised in the shadow of his father, the man whose London church was the largest in the world, Thomas wanted to follow in his father's footsteps. When he was only eight years old, he had said, He hoped to grow up and be a good man and preacher like his papa. Although it was still a dream at the age of 20, his dream was interrupted by his poor health. Who would have thought that instead of attending his father's preaching college, he would be leading sheep shearers in Australia? He was leading them out of the wool shed, away from wrestling their sheep, to hear the gospel. When Thomas's family shipped him down under for a better climate, he thought he would support himself as an engraver, but the Aussies wanted him to preach. Newspapers both lauded and criticized his speaking ability, comparing him to his famous father. Thomas wrote home, confidence in God is a great thing, but I think a certain amount of self-confidence is also necessary. He felt very incompetent, But over time, he was convinced that in his words, the potter will shape the vessel for the particular service in which he chooses to employ it. It's true. When God finishes his good work in us, we gain unshakable confidence. God tells us in Philippians 1.6, the one who began this glorious work in you will faithfully continue the process of maturing you and will put his finishing touches to it until the unveiling of our Lord Jesus Christ. After preaching to the shearers, Thomas traveled the outback and preached in small churches as well as under gum trees beneath a clear Australian sky. As he prepared to preach in a church in a small town, the farmer pastor opened the back door of the building and called for his horses. Soon, Four equestrian faces peered through the space. The thirsty horses were looking longingly toward the baptistry. Buckets of water were drawn and offered, and Thomas hoped there would be enough rain to keep the baptistry ready for its intended purpose. The whole episode made him smile. During his adventures, Thomas wrote home, Who would have thought 12 months ago that 15,000 miles of ocean had to be traversed first. What a grand thing it is to have a God and a guide and a father to direct. As Thomas grew in confidence that God's own hand led him and shaped him, Thomas' self-confidence increased. A local newspaper wrote and summed up Thomas's results. He has found himself welcomed for his father's sake and liked for his own. Thomas worked as an evangelist throughout Australia and New Zealand, and eventually accepted a pastorate in Auckland, New Zealand, where the church grew to be the largest congregation in the South Pacific. 
The day did come when he was asked to pastor his father's famous church in England. Having developed a solid understanding of God and himself during his time on foreign soil, he had the confidence to lead at home with wisdom and humility. Have you ever felt like you are living in the shadow of someone else and do not measure up? Are you ready to trust God and ask Him to give you the confidence you need to be the person He created you to be? Is today the day you pray and ask God to build in you an unshakable confidence? God's work in us is meant to build unshakable confidence. Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.